Almost exactly a year ago, I first reviewed Fari RPG's Breathless, which is a rules light survival horror game designed to put players in increasingly desperate zombie fighting scenarios. I was thrilled by its simple, elegant mechanics and the ways in which its dice degradation system organically generated tension, forcing players to act like protagonists of a zombie movie by only looting when advantageous and minimizing skill checks in order to conserve resources. It was flexible, so condensed it fit on a pamphlet, and a genuinely impressive sophomore game for author RP. In the years since, Breathless has had time to grow, got out and saw the world, learned a little about itself, and returns now as a fully fleshed out system with a big bushy beard and some gorgeous illustrations. Stoneburner, hitting Kickstarter in April of 2023, is a dramatically expanded evolution of its original incarnation. Gone are the days of lean rules and non-existent lore. A far cry from scraping through each day of the zombie apocalypse, Stoneburner takes players to the far future, point crawling through cursed mines in search of magical artifacts and ancestral glory. While there are certainly drawbacks that come with such an increase in scope, playbooks, world history, and a substantial combat system, plus tons of procedural support for long-form campaigns, make it worth the trade-off. Take up your pickaxe and rune etched rifle, and let's delve into Stoneburner. Stoneburner's world expands on well-worn fantasy tropes. The world is full of dwarves, elves, and humans, who have sailed across the known universe using magic and FTL spaceships. The game pulls inspiration from media such as Deep Rock Galactic, Firefly, Dwarf Fortress, and The Expanse, settling on a techno-fantasy blend. You're just as likely to uncover an evil supercomputer as you are to face down a haughty dragon. However, players are specifically cast as relatives of Broker Longneck, the patriarch of House Grand Rock, who after his death were bequeathed the cursed mines of the Long Belt. Your goal is to wander those abandoned halls, extract magical items and precious metals, and survive whatever demons caused the Long Belt to be deemed a lost cause. Furthermore, your ascendancy to leadership of House Grand Rock is not guaranteed. When you're not fighting monsters, you'll be dodging coups from ambitious rivals and greedy corpse equal to snatch up any unguarded piece of your birthright. RP establishes the setting with smart, simple bullet points across a splash sheet that'll take you two minutes at most to read. They're broad enough to give a lot of flexibility in the way you want to run your world, but specific enough to provide a distinct flavor to the game. Technology is intertwined with the arcane, corporations are constantly trying to undercut you, and magic is always unpredictable. I really like that these guidelines are in place, they ensure you know roughly what you're aiming for with each session, providing potential complications and threats with a few sentences, while not requiring you to slog through a novella of world building. Stoneburner halves Breathless's six skills, giving you bravery, cunning, and intellect, a fairly standard array that boils down your problem resolution to aggressive, sneaky, and smart options. Depending on your character class, each skill will be assigned a d10, d8, or d6 value, which degrades a step each time you use it, with a d4 being the absolute lowest you can roll. Stoneburner, like its predecessor, uses a three-tiered success mechanic, with 1-2 to two being a total failure, 3-4 to four being a success at a cost, and 5 plus being a complete success. Which is pretty forgiving. Even if you burned out all of your skills down to d4s, you're still looking at a 50% chance of being at least partially successful. You can also collect items that have a d4 through d12 dice grade, and use them in place of skill rolls, but since items can be resold for credits, you're going to want to keep those uses few and far between. Lastly, if you ever find yourself in dire need of a skill refresh, you can catch your breath, which restores all your skill dice to their maximum value, at the cost of introducing a new narrative complication. At its core, Stoneburner is working with the same mechanical tensions as Breathless. Even with half the skills, Breathless's other three skills started as d4s, meaning that even though you technically have fewer abilities to work with, your odds of a successful roll are still essentially the same in both games. What Stoneburner does to complicate the Breathless formula is add classes, which I feel shifts the game from its original survival horror setting firmly into the realm of action-heavy dungeon crawlers. There are five archetypes for players to choose from. The Stanchion, a tanky protector. The Sounder, a hunter and sniper. The Striker, a standard infantry damage dealer. The Spellwinder, a powerful magician. And the Sinker, a healer and support class. Each of these archetypes distributes skills in a different way. 
The stanchion has a d10 in bravery, on account of them being the first through the door, prepared to take a few hits. By contrast, the sinker only has a d6 in bravery, since they're supposed to be taking cover behind the stanchion's solid shield, healing and laying down cover fire, generally staying out of danger. Die distribution matters, however, because Stoneburner introduces an ability system, adding some welcome complexity to the system's combat. In addition to seeing dice degradation for skill use, players can also voluntarily degrade their die to expend an ability, automatically triggering powers to protect colleagues from harm or unleash a miniature black hole. I'm a little torn on these abilities. I think they're excellent and fun ways for players to expend resources and add additional tension to the Breathless system's constant struggle to keep your dice at full strength. At the same time, it doesn't make a whole lot of narrative sense. I'm willing to cut it a lot of slack because it's a smart gameplay choice, but I think it'd be hard to justify why shooting a smoke grenade somehow weakens your intellect. In terms of rewards, players are after money and ancestral approval by the way of Visions of Glory. At the end of every game session, characters will receive a divination of one possible version of the future, delivered by the spirits of the dwarves who came before. These visions are dictated by player goals, as their interpretations of something the players want to have happen to their characters during the next play session. If your dwarves are able to make their visions become a reality, they unlock a new ability. I like this a lot as a progression mechanic, because it's largely player driven, allowing them to make their own goals for how they advance. Players set their own benchmarks to receive incentives, and are so able to influence the ways in which their overall campaign progresses. The other major incentive in Stoneburner is a favorite of mine. Once you loot your way through abandoned mines with carts full of magic items, you can turn those items into credits. And what do you spend those credits on? That's right, your very own base. I absolutely love investing money into a base, building a tailored space for characters to hang out in between missions, and Stoneburner makes these kinds of investments mechanically significant, with each addition to the base providing bonuses ranging from the ability to reroll an unlucky die, to healing up an injured dwarf, or, most endearing of all, unlocking a URL to enter your dwarves' names in the annals of House Grand Rock's history. That alone is such a charming incentive, and if you don't actually spend all 2,000 credits required and just go to the URL on your own and put your names in anyway, you're corny. In its last big departure from Breathless, Stoneburner provides pretty solid procedures for GMs to structure a long-form campaign. These world sparks are little more than a list of themes and events for GMs to build upon, seeding motivations for other characters and factions in your world. It's a small thing, but it goes a long way toward helping build ideas and overarching narratives for a campaign. It's one of the first games I've read that explicitly asks GMs to consider the themes of the kinds of story they want to tell, which I think is hugely useful. When I write these videos, I try to put a thesis statement at the top of my outline, a reminder that this is the overall message I want to keep trying to tie the review back into. In the same way, these world sparks can help GMs and players focus their campaign on certain concepts, beliefs, and tropes, which can make for a more satisfying story. It's a significant departure from Breathless. Where its predecessor was just about trying to survive until the next day, Stoneburner is in it for the long haul. Stoneburner is everything I'd want to see from the next iteration of the Breathless SRD. While its tone has shifted dramatically, going from gritty survival horror to fantastical dwarven dungeon crawl, it still builds upon Breathless's core mechanics and premise in an exciting way. The system is still flexible and easy to learn, and constantly ratchets up tension organically. But with the addition of classes, fleshed out combat, and a slate of tables and prompts to support a long-form campaign, Stoneburner has absolutely forged a distinct identity. One of the major benefits of the relative success of Fari RPGs in the last year is RP's ability to bring on Galen Peugeot, who did the remarkable art you've been seeing in the video. Peugeot's illustrations bring the world of Stoneburner to life in the way that only art can. Just look at this comic that the game opens with. I don't want to lend too much importance to art in games, but these illustrations are absolutely gorgeous, really drawing a sharp contrast to Breathless stripped down and condensed pamphlet. The only major criticism I have currently is that the game's solo procedures are a little thin. There's definitely a structure in place, but I feel there should be a broader list of prompts and gameplay suggestions to make solo play a robust experience. And good news, this is something that RP has stated he wants to see as the game comes out of alpha after the Kickstarter, which launches April 11. I'd love to see this game reach its full potential, so please keep an eye out for when it fully launches. It's weird to feel like a proud uncle about a game system. But seeing Breathless grow from humble beginnings into the robust RPG Stoneburner is shaping up to be, 
I can't help but swell with pride. Reading this alpha copy of Stoneburner was a genuine delight. I've been a fan of Fari RPG since the original Breathless launched, and the difference a year makes has been absolutely staggering. If you want an easy system with great potential for complexity, if you want to tell stories about making your way in the universe by fighting demons and striking it rich, you're going to want to watch this space. Thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate everyone who takes the time to get to the end of these videos. Um, it's really fun to talk about tabletop games and I've really been able to... This video is kind of a great example of what it's like to, you know, be doing this for a year because I can actually see how Breathless has evolved into this system and it's just, um, it's really neat. I'm very, I'm very proud of what uh, uh, RP's done. But anyway, if you want to find more of my work, I'm at AaronSX on Twitter. Uh, my main site is aavoid.com where I talk about games and writing and health policy. I also do two podcasts. The first is at Mortified Pod, where me and my friend Layla do critical media analysis. Uh, we're just about to talk about uh, Final Fantasy X and X-2, which um, at least X was a huge influence on me as a creator, so can't wait for that. Um, and my other podcast is uh, at The Bible Boys, where me and my ex-evangelical friends Michael and Josh talk about Christian media. Um, we're probably going to talk about uh, God's Not Dead soon as our 100th episode uh, comes up, and we'll revisit that. It's a, it's a favorite franchise of mine. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope to have another review out in a couple weeks. Uh, until then, see ya!